G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now I've got something a little bit different this time. Yes, we're going into outer space. Now this was a Christmas gift from my good friend Edwin. And I forgot to add it in the last video when I talked about all the gifts that I received at Christmas. Basically because the thing got lost in the post, didn't turn up to about February. Yes, yeah, so I forgot that it was a Christmas gift. So thanks Edwin, this is absolutely amazing. An old Aurora kit of the Space Shuttle Orion, or they sometimes call it the Space Clipper. And this was in the movie, 2001, A Space Odyssey. So, are you excited? Would you like to have a look inside this? Shall we build it this weekend? Let's find out. Roll the music. All right, let's have a look at it. Well, you get a kind of artist impression of the Pan Am Orion coming out of the space station. And that's not too bad. It's not. It's pretty well how the kit looks, although it's not the same as the one in the movie. And this is the thing. There's a number, if you have a look online, there's a number of different Orions. Um, there's some bits missing on this that they added in the movie. There's supposedly a story where as Aurora designed theirs or copied theirs from plans uh, that were used in the movie. But then there's rumour that when they made the movie, added a few more bits. I mean, Kubrick was always changing things, always adding things, always innovating. So um, the actual Orion in the movie looks very different to this. So um, we'll see. I might make some changes to make it look more like the uh, the one in the movie, but I'm not going to do it a lot. I'm certainly not going to, you know, basically put a whole interior in and all that. No, that's for the birds, I'm afraid. There's some people who've done that. They've built everything everywhere. And, and look, by the time you button it all up, you won't see it. We may try and put an LED inside, so at least the windows light up, and um, the front windshield here where the pilot is, you know, or the um, astronaut, I suppose, where, where they are, we might be able to see that. And we'll see if the detail can be seen behind them. I might put some blanking um, sheets in and a little bit of detail if necessary. But quite frankly, I don't think you're going to see anything through these tiny windows. They are minute. So let's have a look at the kit. 1975 is very old and you can tell the instructions are very yellowed and that's how it is. You get a copy of the uh, artwork there on the uh, front, this time in black and white. You get a blurb here and this is kit number 252 so by my way of thinking it's pretty well very early on in um, Aurora's sort of um, pantheon of spaceships and well 1975 that was you know pretty early on for the company you know you get a big blurb tells you all about it tells you you know the usual sort of things who cares yeah not interested in that what we're interested in and what goes on in the instructions well most of the parts that you will put together are for the motor and the most disappointing thing is after you've put the eight parts that actually build the thing combined with this here there's only eight that actually put the whole fuselage and wings together um, that motor gets hidden inside. You button the whole thing up, never see the motor again. But I might try and make a way to um, have it that the rear will pull away so we can see the motor. And not only that, we need to get in there if we're going to put a battery in there and I'm going to put some LEDs to light up these windows and that front windshield. But there's not much to the instructions. I really, it's, you know, you'd build this bloody thing in a couple of hours. It's really not that hard. It's going to take probably a couple of hours though to clean up the parts and I'll show you that in a sec. It's white. <laughs> it's white and there's a few little black bits. That's it. That's all they give you. There's really not much to it. Then you put the decals on. Now, um, the models that I've seen use the trick that you normally do with spacecraft is that you alternate panels a slightly different shade. You know, if you ever bought a Bandai kit or something like that, you'll, you'll know this trick. You kind of shade things and panel things and then you, you blend it all together and it gives it a much more interesting look. And... Um, there's probably a few more panel lines drawn on here too than what's actually on the kit. I'm going to look into that. I've also got photos of other models and I'm going to adapt mine to look a bit more like the one from the actual movie. It won't need much. Just a few little parts added, a few little lines scribed. I'm not going to go to too much trouble. All right, let's have a look at the parts. Now, as I said, there's not a lot to this kit. There's only about eight parts to build the fuselage and wings and there's probably a few more than that to actually build the motor. You do get the decals and... They're a bit old, but I think they're not too bad. I might, if I put them out in the sun and get a bit of UV on them, they, they may clean up a little bit. I don't think they're too bad. And I've put them in this plastic packet to protect them in the meantime. But I think we'll get away with them. 
because anyway we can have that slightly faded worn out sort of look you know like any sort of aircraft or spaceship that's been getting around for a while i mean i'm sure going in and out of the atmosphere it's going to have a bit of wear and tear <laughs> you get a stand it's a bit ordinary but um it's a stand i may replace that with a um a clear um sort of glass rod or styrene rod or whatever it's made of. Plastic rod, I've got some sort of rod. Uh, might be an acetate or something, I've got these little rods. And I might use one of those instead. But this will this will do for the time being while I sort of get the hang of things. These uh, parts had all already suicided off the one of the sprues or some of the sprues. So it was in quite a state when I got it. The bits were everywhere. Um, there was a bag with things that sort of escaped. So I, I ended up rebagging and trying to make sure I had everything. And luckily all the parts were here in the kit. But that's mainly, well that in fact all those white pieces are the motor. They're all parts of the motor. And then in the clear pieces here, um, those are your windows that go inside the fuselage. And um, there's these, they call them landing lights. They actually fit underneath here on this edge because the the wing goes in. Let's see if I can get this right. The, um, well actually it's the front part of the wing. The front part of the wing goes in, sort of clicks in here, and there's a little gap. I thought, what the hell is that for? And um, that's where this goes. And I imagine the idea is that you paint most of it and leave the little lights so that they're still clear. And whether I can then actually drill a hole through from the body, if I had an LED in there lighting up the windows, I don't know. We'll talk more about that later. Standard of the parts, well, they're not too bad. They're, they're reasonably nicely um, panel lined. I've just put a rubber band on this because I was doing a bit of a oh, test drive fit. And there you go. I've already lost a part on the floor. Carp Monster's already got one part. So, look, it's um, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. You know, you, you've got plenty of lines. I might scribe a few more, but I'm not really going to do that much because the, um, the body's not too bad at all. You get you get quite a lot of... You can see it there. There's lots of little fine lines and lots of little stuff. So, you know, it's, it's not too bad at all. You build this thing in like two seconds. Here we go. Built. <laughs> Oops. Um, you know, it. Um, by the time you sort of do, you you put it together, you can see that there's enough lines, there's enough detail. It it should be interesting. It should be interesting. The um, motor. Well, apart from those parts that were loose, there's also all of all of these. Well, except for that, that goes underneath the. Um, at the back here which is part of or oh, the part that fell on the floor <laughs> yes let's hang on i'll try and find that part that fell on the floor i'm back um yeah uh, this part here has got some sort of they're there they look like vents or they could be sort of um ways of um of of basically manipulating the ship in space you know like little little thrusters is that the word thrusters yeah the thrusters that could move it around it's supposed to have a couple of thrusters here at the front the um the actual, the actual one on the movie has two little thruster holes there. We could probably cut those out. They're, they're just going to be two little V-shaped holes. We can cut those out. We could do that. We could add those. They look nice. There's also a um, another panel on top here, which then has a sort of a suspicious little sort of smoke mark behind it, which is almost like another little thruster, or or maybe it's just the air conditioning vent or something. Maybe it's above the toilets, and that's just mainly the smell coming out. Who knows these things? We don't know. It's a spaceship. It's all made up. Uh, this is uh, the exhaust ports for the um for the motor because the motor well the the rear of it of course has a rocket engine and then this um sits in there you know kind of reminds me of the um the gas masks worn in the plague um yeah why would that come to mind at this moment <laughs> yes um it has these little protuberances at the end here which don't seem to make any much sense i mean you've got this atomic powered rocket motor that's Somehow got some sort of waste gas coming out of here, propelling it along. And then you've got um, sort of like two little exhaust pipes here or antennae. They were bent all out of shape sideways when I got it. And that's as good as I could get them. So I think they're going to go for the cut. And then I'll replace those with some styrene rod. Because they, they don't seem to taper. No, they're just pretty well straight tubes. So I'll replace those, I think. Because there's no way I'm going to ever get those perfectly straight again. They're hopeless. So um, there you go. Now the quality of the parts... Are not bad I mean there is some detail in there but there's quite a lot of cleanup there's lots of little flashy bits and nubby bits and lots of rough edges and lots of little bumpy bits that need to be cleaned off I mean you find it all the way through there's there's um it's just little I don't even know what that is you know there's just little things you just got to watch out everywhere you can't 
assume anything's perfect. So you've got to go around all the edges, check everything. There are sink marks, of course, but thank goodness, um, or injection pen marks. Uh, they seem to be mostly inside, so it's quite good there. I mean, I did a mock-up where I actually did a whole dry fit and put it together when I first when I first got the thing. And it looked pretty good. It, it fitted really well. It literally held itself together. And um, I'm pretty confident we shouldn't have too much trouble. You've got a bit of, um, again, more clean up there to do. But that's all part and parcel modelling. And it's just a little bit rough there on the, um, on the, on the, where the uh, windscreen's going to go. But again, clean up, sanding, putty, there's going to be a bit of that. And that's okay. That's all right. That's to be expected. There's um, some workarounds here in that I've seen. One guy said, well, look, he, he got all this and he said, well, bugger trying to sort that seam out. And he actually cut a tiny thin piece of plastic and put it over there so that would be perfectly flat. And it gets painted black anyway, so it needs to look different. I think I'll steal that idea. That sounds like a great idea. So, <laughs> I, as I said, I have been looking online. There's a number of sinkholes. There's a little sinkhole there. So there are sinkholes through this that again need to be filled. So there is quite a bit of body work to do. But that's okay because there's hardly any parts. So um, you've got to have t something to do. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be finished it in two hours. Well, you have to paint it. The painting's going to be the fun thing because there will be lots of variation and lots of things we can do with that. One of the things that, that is detailed nicely is, is this here. And you can see all those dials and all that stuff. That's terrific. And you think, oh, that must be in the cockpit or something. It must be somewhere we can... No. That's facing towards the rear of the motor. That's inside towards the rear. You, you'll, you, know, you button it up, you'll never see that. In fact, even when it's assembled, it's hardly seen. It's as though somebody, you know, there's some guy in there called Scotty, <laughs> who's hiding in the back of this thing, and um, I'm giving it all I can, Captain! Yeah. <laughs> you know, who knows? And that's the only sort of fancy thing you've got. And this is the area for the, the motor. And surprisingly, the floor is really rough. So... I don't know, it's just like, uh, you know, William the Concreter was in there and he didn't bother to scream. A bit pathetic. I mean, the spaceship's probably worth billions of dollars and they didn't even bother to smooth the floor off. I mean, what kind of construction is that? Gee, Pan Am, I'd be complaining about that if I were you. Who knows? It's all made up. It's all science fiction. And when you think about it, this was 45 years ago. Well, yeah, 45 years ago for the kit. 50 more years ago when Stanley Kubrick made the film 2001, which is what this is from. So if you don't know that, go and look that up and look up 2001. By today's standards, it's a bit of a boring movie in some ways. I mean, I still love it. Um, but, you know, people that have grown up with all the special effects from Star Wars all the way through to the modern stuff that's all oh, whiz-bang, fast in your face, well, it's a bit slow and a bit obvious. But back then, we hadn't been in space. We hadn't done all the things that we've done today. So... They were imagining it. This was the late 60s. Kubrick was imagining it, how it could be. And we were only just going to the moon. I think when he was shooting it, we weren't even on the moon yet. So it's fascinating that all these things that he dreamt up and all the stuff he came up with in movies and a lot of the ideas that then became standard in all science fiction movies after that, this was all new territory. I mean, Kubrick took three years to make the film. Yeah. So... Everything was done in minute detail, including like this ship, which is only on the screen for like 15 seconds. A lot of detail went into it, a lot of planning, and, you know, fascinating. It's fascinating stuff. I really like it. So I'm really looking forward to putting this together. So um, let's hope I can have a go at this this weekend and, um, and do a good job of it. Who knows? I mean, I'll do the best I can. But um, don't expect me to do a full interior. No, that's not going to happen. We'll just make something that's indicative of a clipper ship from 2001 so i hope you like that i'll give you an update when i basically get this whole thing glued together and i've probably got the motor built and then we'll do another update as we go with the painting and we'll probably get this done over the next few days when i say weekend we're talking one of the weekends in the uh, apocalypse here now they kind of drag on a bit these weekends <laughs> all right that's it it's goodbye from australia and it's huru from harry hideni <laughs>